Good morning, everyone, and uh, sorry, that's a surprise and last minute change, and I'm sorry for the change of the topic. And uh, today, I'm really happy to chat to about the Istio traffic and cost of and um, like traffic optimization afterwards, but uh, now we will be talking about the reliability and performance testing of Kubernetes operators, and I hope that you'll find this uh, insightful and, find and learn something new today. So, uh, today as we are now a decade in, into adoption of the Kubernetes, we are using it for more than just container orchestration. We see and we're starting now to build platforms on top of it, and we see more and more companies now trying to build their own uh, operators, and as we automate and increasingly automate with the uh, operators, performance and reliability becomes really important. So quickly, I'll go through some of our journey and uh, in particular some challenges that we had around uh, performance optimization and testing. So first of all, why? And uh, you've probably heard the uh, API-driven platform and the speakers b before me also noted how it, it is important that uh, users have an API front door into the, into the platform. And as if you worked in a big, or if you're working in a big organization, you're probably familiar with an experience when lots of new services and features and teams are being constantly onboarded to your platform. And they come with complex, with the requirements for complex infrastructure. They need cloud resources. Kubernetes resources, networking plumbing, IAM definitions, CI, CD, and so on and so and so forth. The list really goes on. And on the other side, we as platform engineers, we want to provide, to, to enable to do them in a like, cost-efficient manner, in a secure and compliant way. So there is a lot of challenges that we need to address here. And uh, as I was talking about uh, operator's performance in the Kubernetes community days just a couple months ago, it sparked a bigger discussion in the community of operators versus cross-plane or other approaches on how to approach the API-driven platform. And there is indeed no shortage of tools how you can do that. And if you haven't heard about the cross-plane, cross-plane is a really powerful tool that allows you to manage uh, ex cloud resources and external resources, SKRM, which is a Kubernetes resource model. As a platform engineer, you can build powerful compositions, which, is, which can be used as an abstraction of your platform and exposed to users. But as, when it comes to the operators, the power of operators is that it is like a blank canvas. You can implement anything that you desire. And obviously the drawback of this and the price that you pay is that you have to really have this deep expertise, deep knowledge, and you need to maintain this and productionize and everything that comes as a result of it. But you also not necessarily need to choose one or the other. There, there could be some use cases when one approach is, appro is more uh, suitable than the other, or you can combine. In fact, we in NZ use some of, the, um, some of the static generation. For example, we want to, 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 to provide to the user very minimal uh, API for their high-level workspace, for example. Then we will expand it to more detailed definitions before it hits the cluster. In other cases, we will apply some definitions to the cluster with custom resources, and then there will be other operators that will take this custom uh, resources and expand it into Eastern Kubernetes primitives and so forth. Now, at the heart of every operator is the reconciliation loop. This is what sets operators apart from any software, uh, any generic software, and this is what makes operators really hard to scale and uh, many, ch many performance challenges coming out of it, starting from the huge memory footprint that um, your cache may incur, then it's an event-driven platform that any event that happens will trigger work in, inside the operator. You can control the concurrency to speed the things up, but then there is the things like uh, rate limiting and other bottlenecks, and it's, it's pretty complex. 
So to write the operator is actually the intersection of two disciplines. You need to have deep knowledge of software engineering as well as Kubernetes, and each one of, <laughs> on its own is uh, pretty complex. Now, as far as the testing goes, we have very well-defined frameworks for testing all the way from software to the Kubernetes environment. But when we talk about the performance testing, we don't have anything that is a standard. So a couple of words of, about the performance testing. There is a lot more than the, there is, a, there is different types of performance testing that uh, we know in industry, but for operators, these two types are more, uh, like more relevant. So the load test is when you apply the load, which is similar to the expected levels of the production levels of load. And the stress test is when you take it a bit further and see how your system behaves at the limits, when it starts to break, when the performance starts to degrade. And for us, this was actually the first, uh, uh, the first drive why we wanted to do with the, go with performance testing. So to choose the tool, what do we want out of the tool? So obviously we want the ability to generate the load, then to apply it with certain characteristics. We also need to ensure that we have a reproducible and contr controllable environment. And for operators, it is more than CPU and memory. It is also the same settings of client-side and server-side rate limiting. Then the external dependencies here, you will have to emulate some of the resources, and th this will come at the cost of your results being less representative. And in the end, we want metrics and reports. The challenges of finding a tool like this is that each operator is a bit unique. We don't always know what exactly we want to measure. Is it the number of the resources? Is that amount of change in the system? And custom resources is not the same as the HTTP request. So there's, we have did a bit of an analysis, and we didn't find really a tool which is accepted as a, as a standard. So we evaluated and, st and uh, we evaluated cluster loader too, and its strength and weakness comes from the same place. And this is the fact that this is the official tool of six scalability that is used to test the performance of Kubernetes itself. So it's a really powerful tool. It is feature rich, but at the same time, it is not aimed at uh, end users like us. So you'll have to do a bit of digging learning curve in the beginning, maybe looking at the source code, but I think it's really worth it, and it, as I said, it's really a powerful tool. Just give you a glimpse of how that looks like. You have a test where you specify how, like, the, the rate limits or parallel executions, and then you, you provide the template of your custom resources, and then you teach, you teach the system how your resources look like. So find generic resource by the label, and then give the conditions that describe how the good looks like and how the bad looks like. And with generic query, you can also provide your specific queries that are relevant to you. So that's all that I had time for today for this uh, very short keynote. As an engineer, I find it really fascinating to take the system to the limits to load it with the um, different scenarios and then see how that performs at scale. It's really different to what you may experience with the POC or, or things of a smaller scale. And uh, I'm also really curious to learn from you what uh, have you used to, to build your API-driven platform and how do you think about uh, the performance and scalability and issues like that. So thank you. <laughs>